Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and participants, a very warm welcome to the China-Indonesia Joint Laboratory on High Temperature Gas Cooled Reactor event. My name is Dwi Rahayu, and I have the honor of serving as your, as your Master of Ceremony for today's event. This event is testament to the strong collaboration between China and Indonesia in the field of nuclear energy research. We are honored to have with us today, Dr. Rahadia Waludin, the chairman of research organization for nuclear energy, who will be delivering the opening remarks for this event. Following his remarks, we will have a guest lecture from the Institute of Nuclear and New Energy Technology, Tsinghua University. We are delighted to welcome Professor Dr. Ing Sun Yuliang and Dr. Sung Jun, who will be sharing their expertise on the advancement in HTGR technology, insight in, into reactor design, fuel, and radioactive waste technology based on HTRPM. After the guest lecture, we will have an interactive discussion where the audience will have the opportunity to ask questions and engage in a dialogue with our speakers. This session will be led by Bapak Fikri. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please join me in a giving a warm welcome to Dr. Rahadi Awaludin for his opening remarks. I mean, in this research organization for nuclear energy, it has seven research centers, seven research centers, and two research centers of them are closely related to topics today. Research uh, Center for Nuclear Reactor Technology and Research Center for Nuclear Fuel Cycle and Radioactive Waste Technology. So I said nuclear fuel and reactor are closely related to uh, topics of uh, today's guest lecture. And the, the other five research centers uh, related to radioisotope, radiopharmaceutical, and biodiversity. 
and the Research Center for Accelerator Technology, Research Center for uh, Safety and Meteorology, Research Center uh, for Radiation Processing, usually using irradiator, for example, gamma and electron based uh, irradiator, and Research Center uh, Nuclear uh, uh, Radiation Detection and Radiation detection and nuclear analytics. So we use, for example, our uh, reactor, our nuclear beam for, for example, for uh, neutron scattering and then for nuclear activation analysis in this area center. So uh, th that was uh, seven of our um, research uh, centers and research organization for uh, nuclear energy. So today, there are, I think our colleagues here, mostly from research center for nuclear reactor technology and the center for nuclear fuel cycle and radioactive uh, waste technology. And I would like to welcome our colleagues uh, in the organization for nuclear energy, Prof. Jarod, Bapak Ibu semuanya, <laughs> satu persatu, Pak Yus yang kemarin WA saya, thank you, Pak Yus. Uh, and, uh, <coughs> I believe that uh, our lecture today uh, from our uh, guests from Tsinghua University, uh, Professor Sun Yuliang and Dr. Sun Jun will be very important and useful for us, especially reactor re related to uh, reactor technology and of course nuclear fuel. And I believe it's very useful and beneficial for us. So I, I hope that uh, it can be this good opportunity, very great opportunity uh, can be used for us to increase our uh, capacity, our knowledge, and our uh, technology related to uh, nuclear uh, technology. And I would like to thank organizing committee for organizing uh, this event. And thank you very much for your hard work. I think you have a hard work to prepare this event. Uh, thank you very much. And I believe that it will be very uh, useful for us. And once again, thank you very much for our testing guests, uh, participants, uh, and speakers today. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Bapak Rohadi Awaludin, for your insightful opening remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to announce that our next session will be led by Bapak Fikri Ahmad Furkan. He will guide us through the next session, which will consist of guest lecture as well as Q&A sessions. Please join me in welcoming Bapak Fikri to the stage to commence the next session. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in this agenda, uh, I would like to tell you that we uh, we divided this uh, agenda into two main sessions. The first session is the part, uh, presentation session that will be uh, conveyed, that will be delivered by our speakers, uh, Mr. Dr. Sun Jun and uh, Professor Dr. Sun Yulian. So, uh, in Let's let's get into the first uh, section of our main agenda. Uh, for Mr. Dr. Sun Jun and Mr. Professor Dr. Sun Yuliang, uh, are you all set to deliver your presentation? Yes. Uh, yeah. The floor is yours. <laughs> okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you again. Uh, 
you know that it's a long time for the COVID-19, but right now, now I have to very glad to be here to meet you all, all the old friends. Uh, I have full memory uh, for collaboration with you guys for like nine, eight or nine years. It's very good memory. I have made very good friendship with uh, many of you. So today I, I want to share some information for you and hope that you can uh, enjoy uh, our lecture. Lecture is prepared by uh, Professor Yulang Sun and me. Uh, I want to share some of the new information about HDR development in China. Okay, so today uh, I will share those topics. Uh, first, I will introduce our university, uh, our institute. Then after that, I will talk about some uh, uh, development of HDR in China, including the uh, nuclear power policy in China, the technology uh, development and some future plans uh, for our HGGR. And after that, I will talk a little bit about our uh, uh, collaboration in uh, last few years. So, uh, okay. So uh, as you know, Tsinghua University is one of the top university in China. And uh, I think it's a very beautiful city. Some of you have been there several times. So in the campus, so we have some uh, uh, historical sites over there. I hope someday you can come to our campus and have very uh, fruitful discussion over there and visit there. And for Tsinghua University, we have uh, a long history. Just uh, last Sunday, we have our 112th anniversary for our university. We have a big celebration here. And uh, right now, I think Tsinghua University have been recognized as one of the top universities in the world. We have many disciplines covered in our university. Uh, including nuclear uh, power. Okay. So right now, Tsinghua University is also one of the global university uh, in the world. Right now, we have more than 20 schools, uh, around 59 departments. The faculty, right, uh, the amount number is, uh, is, uh, is close to 4,000. And also, we it's a very international community there. Uh, right now, we have around uh, 16,000 students in our university. We have around uh, 3,000 international students over there for undergraduate, undergraduate study and uh, postgraduate studies. So, uh, and, and some of them are from Indonesia. They join our uh, master degree program to, yeah, yeah, it's a uh, program called TUNAM. I think maybe some of you heard of that. So every year we have several students from different countries. They will join our lectures again, their degree after that. And for the nuclear education and training in Chihuahua University, we still have a long history around six years or so. And those nuclear education program have cultivated many, many students. And then when they uh, graduated from Tsinghua University, they found their jobs in important uh, areas in China, for example, in the uh, engineering enterprises, for example, CNNC, CGN, different uh, corporation groups. And they also have their jobs and careers in the governmental agencies, or they are continue with their research uh, in the institutes or in different universities. And right now in Tsinghua University, we have two departments related to nuclear uh, education and training. One is called Department of Engineering Physics, uh, short for DEP. They have uh, undergraduate students and postgraduate students in their department. And, for, and the other one is called ANAT, Institute of Nuclear, nuclear and New Energy <clears throat> Technology, ANAT. But in ANAT, we only have postgraduate students. So every year around uh, uh, 150 undergraduate students and another uh, 170 postgraduate students were going to this university to have their educational uh, programs. And also you can see from the slide that the postgraduate uh, program can cover most of, of the uh, majors or disciplines in this uh, university. So I think if you have time or the opportunity, you can 
join our program for your master's degree or post uh, for the doctor degree over there. For Annette, uh, we have uh, more than 60 years uh, history and uh, it was founded in 1960. And uh, right now is, I think it's the uh, biggest uh, nuclear education and research space in China. So I think it is the almost the largest R&D base in the China educational system. Right now we have more than 300 staff working in that area and uh, around 600 postgraduate students in our institute. Okay. And uh, in Annette, uh, basically we had two campers in Beijing, one campers. We have offices, buildings inside the Tsinghua uh, campers, but we still have a larger experimental base uh, in the Northern part of Beijing in this experimental base, we have reactors, facilities over there. But in this year, we have a new site under construction. It is in another province, it's close to Rongcheng city. If you're familiar with that name, the, uh, the site is very close to HTRPM site. So we have a new idea, have a new base there. We have the further uh, facilities facilities or further uh, research for reactors over there because it's quite close to HTRPM. Uh, the environmental uh, assessment will be easier for nuclear related facilities. Okay. And in Anad, in the Beijing experimental base, we have many reactors there. Typically we have four and we also have a, a, a great number of facilities related to different uh, disciplines or majors, for example, uh, some hydraulics for the equipment or components for different things, okay? And in, in INET, we have uh, more than 20 divisions and offices. Uh, typically, we divide it into two sections. One is uh, nuclear related, the other related to new energy or other uh, majors. Okay, this is a very short uh, introduction of uh, our university and institute. And after that, I will introduce uh, the nuclear power development in China, especially for HTGR. So uh, several years ago in China, we have the dual carbon policy. We want to achieve our uh, carbon picking and carbon neutrality goals uh, in several years. So we want to achieve the peak at 2030 and uh, another one, neutrality at 2060, that is a goal. So you can find the figures here. So right now the contribution of nuclear power in China is still a, a small number, but after that we want to increase uh, the portion of nuclear contribution to China to above that. So we have a lot of things to go to do and uh, in, in nuclear power in China uh, also have a big uh, pro, uh, program. So you can see, find the number in this slide that nuclear power is increasingly in these all these years. Uh, and the, right now the, uh, the national policy of China for nuclear is still very positive. We, China will actively promote the development of nuclear power in a orderly manner and in uh, the premise of safety. So that will motivate us to contribute more into the area of nuclear energy. So right now we have uh, 54 reactor, nuclear reactors in operation. We have another 24 in construction. And the number is, uh, is large, I mean, also in the world. <laughs> so, uh, and every year we also have more nuclear power plants approved by the State Council, uh, typically six to eight every year. So it's been a large number for next, uh, I mean, five or 10 years. Then after that, I mean, this number may be uh, over 100, for example. So it will be a, a big contribution from the nuclear power to, uh, to the nation. And uh, you can see the map of China. You can find that we have different, many sites uh, across the coastal area. And uh, right now we have uh, many uh, uh, nuclear power plants on operation or on, on construction. The mainstream is still PWRs, but uh, TPWRs was the, no, the, not the sole reactor type. We have uh, gas cool reactors, we have fast reactors, 
and uh, so you can find the, the place, uh, the, uh, the arrow over there. This is a site for HTRPN. It's under construction. Uh, for HTGR, as I said, is uh, only implement to PWRs for electricity generation. And also, uh, if we want to contribute this technology into the climate change area, it, uh, we ho also have the plans to repower in some of the retailed coal fire plants by this kind of technology. And also because of the features of a higher operation temperature, we can use HTGR for coal generation and also to supply steam to uh, chemical plants, for example. If you have further uh, further develop for the technology, for example, for higher operation or very high operation of this technology, we can use that to produce hydrogen. So this is the role of HTGR in China. We we have put uh, more than uh, 50 years into the R&D of this technology, and some of them have been achieved in this year. So follow this roadmap, you can see that we started with basic research then we have our test reactors. We go on with the demonstration plant called HTRPM. And still we have uh, further plans for commercial uh, HTGR. And if we recall the historical development of gas core reactors, we know that it started uh, more than 70 years ago from the carbon dioxide uh, coolant. Then we have the idea to use the helium and combining with the uh, ceramic uh, coated particle uh, air, uh, fuels. And uh, in a word, we used uh, the other countries use test reactor and the properties to get more mature uh, materials and technology. Then we have the idea of a modular HTGR because it has the philosophy of inherent safety used in this area. It's important for this kind of uh, uh, concept and uh, in the world right now, we have uh, several uh, reactors using this philosophy to design and operate. One is HTTR from Japan, the other two is HTR10 and HTRPM in China. Uh, technical basis of this technology, we have uh, basically three. For example, we use the inert helium as the coolant, we use the graphite as the moderator, and the, the triso uh, particle fuel is very unique uh, technology fit for that. So based on these technologies, we can uh, compare that with the PWRs from the table simply. We can know that those materials used in this technology can ensure the higher operation of the technology. So that based on the materials and the design philosophy in HTGR, we know that it can uh, be operated in very high operation and also uh, besides the electricity generation, we can also use that for non-electric applications. Uh, for the high per, uh, operation, uh, temperature operation, uh, you can find uh, the range of uh, temperature used in different applications. We know that we can use that for uh, 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 district heating, and we also can use that for hydrogen production. It's the future promise of HDGR. And for the uh, triso particle fuels, it's a very tiny one. We use the fuel kernel in, a, in the center. Then we can coat it with different layers of the uh, uh, higher temperature resistant materials. And also we can uh, use the, this particle embedded in different shapes of the uh, uh, fuels. For example, you can use the spherical ones or, or the or the uh, block type ones. So based on, based on these two types of uh, fields, we can have different uh, types of uh, HTGR called the pebble bed ones or prismatic ones. So in the history, we have many concepts of be, uh, based on this uh, uh, module HTGR. One is uh, prismatic ones, the other one is pebble bed ones. So uh, in the history, prismatic ones have lots of designs for different countries. And for pebble bed ones, we also have different designs. So right now for pebble bed ones, we have HTR10 and HTR uh, PM in operation. And in recent years, we have another new design from 
uh, X Energy of the uh, America, US, uh, USA, they have their own plans to put into operation around the year 2028. So uh, this kind of technology is still promising and uh, draw a lot of uh, attention from the world. And uh, if we talk about this type of uh, technology, one of the important things that inherent safety, uh, basically from uh, three uh, features. One is that uh, the reactivity control, we can shut it down in any accident because it can use the full temperature uh, range for negative feedback. And also this temperature margin is large so that it can compensate large uh, reactivity compared to PWRs. The second one is that we can use this technology to remove the decay heat after the shutdown because the, the power level of this technology is quite low. So we can rely on the properties of the material by conduction and the radiation to remove the heat outside of the core. So there is no core mount for this kind of technology. It's quite safe. And uh, we call it the self-acting decay heat removal is important for that technology. So the, the decay heat in the center of the reactor can be removed outside of the uh, reactors through the pebbles, through the graphite, and outside to the uh, environment. Uh, the third one is from the radioactive attention because we don't need, uh, uh, it's important to retain all the the active materials inside the fuels. So we have the idea to divide it, the, the fuel into many small, many uh, large amounts of small particles in there. And the, for each particle, the silicon carbide uh, cladding is important to retain all the fission gas inside the reactor for more than 60 years. Okay. So following the idea of uh, HTGR, module HTGR, China have their own uh, roadmap, starting with the HTR-10. It's an important test reactor for us to understand the idea and how to design that, how to do the uh, fuel manufacture, how to construct that, how to run that, how to operate that, how to do the test to validate the idea of inherent safety. So when the experts go back to China and they convince the central government to support us by the uh, national high tech program. And then we, when we get the funding from the central government, we studied the construction in the year 1995. After five years, it reached the first criticality. That means that it, start, it has started the uh, exper experiments and the test then we have done a lot of tests to validate this kind of uh, uh, technology and it, uh, it is operated with the full power in the year 2003. So for these uh, long years of HDR term, we have done different kinds of experiment. One of the important one is to demonstration the inherent safety by extreme accident. So, but in these years, we still have new plans on that experimental uh, experiment uh, reactor. Uh, as, as I mentioned here in this year, maybe we, we can do the experiment for higher uh, temperature operation. Originally, the output of HTR10 temperature is around 700 degrees C, but we still have a program to increase that uh, temperature to 850. So if everything goes in well, we are uh, finished that program this year. Okay. And for HTR10, this uh, smaller, very smaller one, the summer power output is 10 megawatt, but still, uh, even if it's a very small experimental uh, reactor, everything can be found uh, in this reactor. So we can see the side-by-side -side arrangement of this reactor, we can find different components inside the reactor. So uh, uh, by this reactor, we know, almost know everything about HTGR. So typically it's uh, uh, important 
uh, few modes of this one, we can run that with the online filling and the refilling process. So this uh, figure show how we can put the fuels inside and bring the spent fuel outside that and uh, by the fuel handling system. It's, it's quite complicated, but it's quite useful for, for a more a paper bad HDGR. For HDGR, we have a different modes of normal operations. As we said, uh, uh, electricity generation is only one of the functions. The other ones we can use that for cogeneration. So for HDR10, we have different modes in different time. So we have call it mood one, two, three, four. Uh, we can use HDR10 for code generation, or we can only use that for the heat for the uh, area around uh, our experimental base. Uh, one of the important tasks for HDR10 is the demonstration of the inherent safety uh, philosophy. Uh, in the year 2000, of 2004 and 2006, we have done many extreme accident to um, HDR10 to see whether it is good with that design. So we have done many kinds of uh, accident, like a loss of coolant, uh, trip of the turbine, uh, loss of offside power reply, and uh, we can also down the trip of the helium circulator of the primary side. Plus, uh, we we are put a control road stair in a higher place without insertion into the reactor active core. So all these experiments have have show very good demonstration of the design. To means means meaning that the modular HDR design is good and is right. For HDR term, we know many things, and uh, it uh, give us experience to go further with this technology. Then after that, we have the idea for larger uh, scale uh, HDR. So the central government still continue to support us by the funding and also we get support for the industry, nuclear industry in China. So you can see from the picture, we have a very good collaboration between the R&D uh, part, the industrial part and the engineering enterprises. We have a big uh, group to, uh, to construct this new uh, demonstration plant. And also from the other, industrial suppliers from China and abroad, we get a very good supply from different uh, components. So right now, if we get to that number, almost all the component uh, can be supplied in China. And some of them like, uh, like graph nuclear grade graphite supplied by Japan or other countries. So you can find the HDRPM site in this map. It's in Shandong province. It's in, in almost the eastern coastal area of China. This is the three dimension uh, uh, design of HTRPM plant. We can have uh, different buildings in this picture. So in the middle is called the reactor building. We can find the two reactors over there. And also we have the control building because the main control room is located in that building. And we also have a auxiliary building over there. We have few handling system, uh, helium purification system inside in that part. And uh, we also have a spent fuel storage building because we want to put the spent fuel of HDRTM there for almost 40 years. We have to put a lot of a cask or canister over there for the uh, interior storage. But after that, we have to send those fuels to the uh, reprocessing uh, plants. And we also want to gen generate electricity by this uh, by HDRPM. So we have a steam turbine building uh, uh, in the, the other way, other part. Uh, for HTRPM, uh, you can see, uh, find the main uh, parameters designed for that. For each reactor, uh, the summer power is 250 uh, megawatt, is uh, much larger. 
HTR10, that means that the sc uh, component scale are, are larger. We have to design everything uh, in another way. So you can find the core meter diameter is three uh, meters long and the height is 11 meters. It means that uh, the reactor pressure vessel, the height is almost 25 meters higher. It's very big, big one uh, compared to other kind of uh, uh, reactors. And also inside the reactor, the number of pebbles inside is also large. We have uh, 420 thousand pebbles inside means that we need an industrial uh, fuel plant to fabricate those uh, pebbles. And also uh, you can find the, the parameters for steam is higher. Uh, temperature is over 500 degrees C and the pressure is almost uh, uh, 13 megapascal. So we can, this, this kind of number is very close to uh, coal-fired plants. So it means that if we want to replace or repowering some of the re uh, retail the coal plant, we can just use their turbine and then switch uh, that into a reactor. And uh, for HTRPM, the whole process is long. Uh, in this uh, long time, we follow the idea of modular HGR. But still, we have new, something new, we call the innovations in the engineering implementation. So we have summarized some of the important things into this paper published in 2016. Uh, we summarized some important item called, uh, we have the combination of factors uh, with the uh, steam turbine, and uh, we use the helical coil steam generator, and uh, we use the electric uh, magnetic bearings for the helium circulator. We have reacti new reactivity control system. It's a combination of control road, a uh, spore, absorber balls. We have uh, upgraded fuel handling system, and we also have used the uh, dry uh, storage uh, for the spent fuels. But all these things are new and never being achieved in the history. So in this system, we have two reactors, two steam generators. So these two can be run independently or can be combined together. So, and the, those uh, steam supplied from these two reactors can be run into one uh, steam pipeline to generate electricity through the steam turbine. Um, but also we can, for example, we can run only one of them. The other one is like in maintenance or other things. Uh, they can rely on the almost independent feed water uh, uh, system. And the photo pebble bed, as, as I mentioned, we have a large number of fuel inside. You see in the middle of that. And uh, we have our own uh, fabrication uh, system uh, for, the, for the fuels. Uh, starting from the kernel uh, to the to the pebbles is very mature. And for reactor internals, we have uh, graphite reflectors. Its function is to save the neutron, and also it can form the a structure uh, inside the reactor. It can it is surrounded the pebbles in the middle, uh, like the picture showed there in the middle of that. Uh, is hollow is for the pebbles and around that is the graphite uh, reflectors. Then outside that is the carbon bricks. We use carbon bricks to for the thermal shielding and also it can lower the neutron dose to the outside metallic internals or reactor pressure vessels. And outside that, as I mentioned, we have metallic core barrels to support those ceramic internals inside. And outside we have the reactor pressure vessel and all these things, uh, uh, especially for the reactor pressure vessel, as I mentioned, it's a very big one and uh, large diameter, uh, large height. Uh, it's not easy to manufacture. But here in Shanghai Electric uh, Corporation, they have uh, uh, faced that challenge and make that happen. 
for the steam generator uh, is uh, also uh, a new design because we use uh, uh, 19 assemblies. The number is 19, but for each assembly, we have 35 uh, heat transfer tubes. Uh, we use the helical coils to make that happen. Uh, it's also a challenge to us. We spent several years to achieve that technology to put uh, each uh, uh, heat transfer tubes in, in position because they, we don't want to put them too close or too larger. It's not easy for the assembling process, but right now everything goes well. And for the main uh, helium circulator is also another challenge because you want to uh, supply the uh, helium flow in the primary side. Uh, it uh, will provide a first flow of, of, of helium in a normal operation. And uh, we have to use the electric and magnetic uh, bearings inside because it's more reliable and save a lot of uh, energy. Uh, is uh, uh, we have done a lot of prototype prototypes for this helium circulator uh, inside the factory in our uh, campus. We have done a lot of uh, experiments based on normal operation and extreme conditions for starting up and shut down several times. But right now it's okay for long time operation. <clears throat> for the control road and drive mechanism. Uh, we have 24 uh, control rows inside, divided into three groups. Uh, they are, uh, they are safety. We have safety rows. We have safe uh, regulating rows, and we also have the shut co shut down rows. Uh, those pictures are the uh, the top uh, on on the reactor pressure vessel. Uh, we have another reserved shutdown uh, system called a small observable or uh, small observable a small observable sphere system actually the uh, uh, the material to absorb uh, neutrons and the same with the control rows but still we have we need the additional system uh, to avoid the, the common failure of this reactivity control system so we rely on the uh, the gas uh, compressor to push those uh, small balls uh, go back to their tanks if we want to restart the reactor. For the fuel handling system, as I said, it's a very complicated system. Uh, if you uh, remember for HDR 10, uh, for every day we have to uh, recycle uh, the, the fuels, uh, the number is around uh, uh, 125, but for this bigger one for HDR PM, every day we have to change the number to uh, thousands. So it means that we need automatic running of this fuel handling system. It's quite uh, complicated. We have done a lot of experiments to uh, to to make sure it can be run in a reliable way. And for the fuel, uh, spent fuel storage uh, is also a new design because we use the same size of the canister or, or cask to store the spent fuel. It's the same size with uh, PWRs. And in this system, we have uh, uh, layers of uh, dry wells inside the storage. As you can see from the picture, uh, we can put around 40,000 spent fuels in one canister and uh, each canister can put in the right position of the well. And this storage can be run in a forced flow uh, circulation, or it can, it can be run in open natural circulation mode. So it's another kind of a passive uh, design for the storage. Uh, since the uh, the components are new uh, in larger scale compared to HDR10, so we have to do the verification of different components uh, again. So we have built our engineering laboratory in our experimental base to do the verification and validation process. So we put almost every component in this laboratory, and we have finished all the verification experiments by helium uh, 
environment. So like a helium circulator, a field handling system, the control rows, absorber boards, steam generator, and also helium purification system. All this system can be found in this laboratory. And uh, for the fuel, first uh, we use our demonstration production facility to generate uh, uh, samples, and then we send samples to Netherlands for the radiation ta uh, test. They found that the performance of those fields are quite do good compared to the worst levels. And after that, we also send the radiated fields to Germany for higher uh, temperature test. We call it the PIE. And we found that the quality is still good compared to the historical experiment. So those results give, give us more, much more confidence that we can run the HTRPM in a very good way. So uh, we need another uh, industrial uh, plant to fabricate the uh, fuel pebbles because we need a large number of pebbles uh, running each, each year. So right now, uh, uh, everything is, is good. And for HDRPM, we have enough fuels uh, for the running. And for HDRPM, actually, we have been doing that for like more than 20 years. So you, as you can see from the milestones, uh, just uh, after the full operation of HDR10, we have the idea for HDRPM. So we started the standard design of HDRPM. Then we get support from the central government and also from the industry. Then we use our almost three years to finalize the general design of HTRPM. Then we continue with the licensing process, the verification process, and also the production uh, factory of different components and, these, uh, and also the fuels. Then after Fukushima accident, when we finished the uh, safety inspection of those designs, we started to construct uh, the reactor building of HDRPM. We call it uh, uh, first the concrete boat day, like 10 years ago. Then continue with that. We use around three, uh, three years to finish the construction of the reactor building. Then we started to uh, install important components in their position. For example, we started that with the reactor pressure vessel in the year 2016. Then we put metallic internals inside. You could put the cooling panels inside. So everything were put in the right position. And after that, we continue to install the uh, graphite, uh, the carbon bricks, everything in a position. Then with the steam generator, the helium circulator, and after that, after everything is installed, we start commissioning. So uh, for commissioning, we divide it into different phases. For example, we started uh, the code tests first. We want to make sure uh, the emission rate of the reactor is, is low because we want to make sure uh, the, uh, uh, the boundary, the boundary, the pressure boundary by the uh, tubes, by the vessels are good. And then after that, we started the whole test. We want to put uh, commissioning in a higher temperature, for example, 250 or higher to make sure everything is good again. And after that, uh, 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 we have to do the test of the uh, turbine, the steam turbine to make everything for electricity generation are all good. And after that, when we finish all the, we call the phase A of commissioning, then we get the permit for the, for the fuel loading and operation. Then, uh, so you can find the picture that we, we load the first fuels into the reactor. Then after that, we use uh, almost one month to reach the first practicality of the RPM. So as we know, we have two reactors inside. We have to do that, do the first criteria one by one. So we have uh, that the first one in September, then the second one in November. So when we finish the criteria, we uh, continue with the fuel loading 
then we can reach a higher power and then we can do a lot of commissioning tasks. So, uh, and by the end of uh, year 2021, we try to connect it to the whole plant, to the grid, to generate the electricity of the one. Of course, the reactor is uh, running a lower power layer, but the electricity generation is important for the whole plant. So it means that everything can be connected together to make it running in the right way, okay. And in the year 2022, still for the commissioning, we call it phase B and the phase C. And uh, normally we want to increase the power level at HDRPM. So uh, by October last year, uh, the reactor number one reached uh, uh, seven megapascal power, means that it's 15% of the plant for power. But for the reactor power level is uh, around 30. It's an important one because if we go across this power level, the reactor pressure, a uh, reactor protector, protection system will be used above that level. But in lower level, it's okay without a uh, protection system. And also, uh, two months later, you can find that each uh, reactor was running in 200 megawatt thermal, means that it's quite close to the full power. It's also very important for us to reach that level. And for this year, of course, our job is to finish the commissioning process. And if we are lucky, we can reach the full power of the whole plant this year. We still do the commissioning right now. We still have a lot of experiments to do to, to finish the commissioning process. But still, we have a lot of challenges. It's uh, still a long way to go, but we have confidence to achieve that sooner enough. Okay, so after P HDRPM, we still have plans for commercial plants because HDRPM is only 200 megawatt electricity, so also a smaller one. If we can compare the HDGR nuclear power plant with the PWRs with coal-fired plants, we need commercial, uh, commercialized and a larger scale. So we we want to based on the. Uh, uh, proved technology, for example, the reactors, the components, everything will be maintained as the same design, the same scale, but we can increase the electricity output to larger scale. So we have the idea to put, for example, six reactors together, uh, connecting to one larger steam turbine to generate 600 megawatt electricity output. So that is the new design called HDRPM 600. So as you can see from the picture in the, in the containment, we have six uh, reactor inside the six gener uh, steam generator in there, but the reactor and steam generator are the same with HDRPM so that we can uh, reach that by lower cost and uh, the economic com competition, com uh, competition will be good for this new design. But still, uh, we have uh, like uh, three new projects related to, to HDRPM 600 running on right now. So I mean, so HDR in China, we will have a larger market. We will have a more uh, outcome in the next few years. Okay, so besides the uh, commercial ones, we have uh, also do R&D related to uh, HDGR. For example, we want to increase the output temperature. We want to use the direct uh, helium uh, pr uh, pressure and also the helium turbine to increase the uh, energy conversion rates to a larger, to, to, uh, to higher uh, level. And also we want to increase uh, the temperature output and connect that to the hydrogen production facility for for the for the future. Okay, that is for the information on HDGR. Uh, by the end, I still want to mention several uh, important things. We have a good collaboration between our two institutes. Uh, we call it China Indonesia Joint Laboratory 
own HTGR. Uh, it was uh, started about 10 years ago <laughs> and, uh, uh, in the year 20. Have a mutual visit. We have a mutual exchange on how to do the collaboration. So as you can see, you can find the pictures uh, over there. We have a mutual visit and the seminars, workshops uh, in different places. And after that, uh, we have the idea to establish a uh, joint laboratory on HTGR from both sides. And uh, we got support from both sides. And uh, we initiate uh, the project by the end of 2017. And uh, we started a program at, by the year 2018. And also, uh, we have done a lot of joint research uh, inside the uh, joint laboratory. We have objectives uh, to strengthen the scientific and the technology capacity building uh, for both countries. And also, we have very good collaboration for many uh, topics. Uh, for example, we have four tasks inside the joint laboratory. The first one is to uh, design a new uh, HDGR, cover band HDGR. We have our idea to uh, for the concept design called the Pluit. It's a 150 megawatt thermal design, and uh, we have joint uh, discussion, joint publication, and uh, I think we have reached much consensus with this design. I think it's a very good one based on the modular HTGR philosophy. Second one, we talk a lot about how to license this kind of reactor in Indonesia. We talk about the differences between the different uh, licensing pro, uh, systems, different countries. Uh, we have to face the challenges between the designers and uh, regulators. We have to discuss how to shorten the time of uh, licensing process. We have a good discussion and also we have joint research reports and also publications. For task three is a, a simulation tour. We want to use that platform to show to the public uh, how it can be operated, whether it's safe enough to run this reactor. And also we have to do a lot of modeling. We have new interfaces for the platform and also we have publications. And uh, for the last one, we talk a lot about uh, the localization potential and the supply chain to, to build this HDGR design. And uh, we also have a mutual visit to different places to, to the sites to see how we can have that vision and also we have uh, joint publications. It all, also the best paper of HTR <laughs> conferences as is quite impressive. And also we have uh, many seminars, those pictures, so four seminars in Beijing, uh, in Bali, in Xiamen and in Jakarta. I think it's quite fruitful discussions over there. And also we have five uh, training workshops related to the uh, design codes and the simulation tools. We had a discussion with uh, like uh, reactor physics, some hydraulics, and also uh, the simulation. Uh, we have the seminars, I think here in Sapong, in Beijing, and uh, yes, in these two places. And uh, we are also in this joint laboratory, or, or we also have prepared offices for both colleagues coming around. We have offices in Beijing, in Sepong, and uh, in China, we have prepared larger offices in Xiamen. Uh, so uh, I think in the year 20, 2019, we have been there. But at that time, there, the office was not ready. But here you can see, you can find a picture over there. It's, it's okay for us to, to continue with the collaboration, yeah. Okay, so after the joint laboratory, we have come into the new phase. We still get support from the ministry. We want to promote that joint laboratory into a new one. We call it Bio on the Road uh, Joint Laboratory. Uh, we started the uh, construction from the year 20.
and uh, in the signing process. And also in that agreement, we have many uh, agreed future tasks. We can have joint research under this new framework and uh, those things can be done in the next few years. It's important for us to continue this good collaboration. Okay. So by the end, I want to uh, summarize what I mentioned today. Uh, modular HDGRs is featured by its technical size and it's a very good one. It can enable in the uh, inherent safety and the process heat applications, especially for hydrogen production in the future. And China have spent more than 40 years to achieve that goal, to make the dream happen for this kind of next technology. And I think China is still continue to pr promote this technology into uh, a new phases, for example, higher temperature, coal generation, and also hydrogen production. It's for the goal of a dual carbon in China is also contributed to the uh, nuclear power community in the world. And uh, I think China Indonesia collaboration under the framework of joint capability will be have a very bright future uh, based on all of our contributions. So thank you very much for listening and uh, I really appreciate your participants. Thank you. All right, that was an interesting that was an interesting topic from our speakers today and let's give him a big applause. So ladies and gentlemen, before we continuing our next session, I would like to invite our speakers today to move over here to sit down on this nice cushion and comfortable chair over here. Mr. Dr. Sunjun and Mr. Dr. Professor Ng Sun Yuliang and Dr. Rohadi Awaluddin, please sit down on this cushion. Nice and comfortable. Okay, right. Because it's just a waste to uh, see this sofa is not is not using. So please, uh, our experts, please come over here to sit down on this chair. Mr. Dr. Saiful Bahri, you can also sit here to uh, to fill this empty to fill this empty chair. You, you can just sit here, Mr. Tapan. You can just sit there also. <laughs> Please join us here, so we can see your beautiful faces easily. <laughs> okay, right. Um, okay. Please be seated. Okay, uh, we are move along into the next session. That is a discussion session. In this discussion session, I would like to invite all participants uh, to address your question directly. And for participants in Zoom, uh, you can just write down your question in the chat columns, or you can just the uh, raise hand emoji so we can. Unmute your unmute your uh, voice so you can ask your question directly. Okay, we've got one of there. Please, Mr. Farisi. Okay. okay. I'm uh, Yusuf Rusdian Ahmad. Thank you for uh, this opportunity. My concern uh, regarding the safety class of this type of reactor. So safety class means uh, direct directed to uh, system component and so on. Uh, will with uh, direct impact to the cost. I believe. Uh, the STGRs is following, uh, according to the regulator, following the PWR or light water system. It will make a, a higher cost than PWR. So in my 
thinking and uh, previous researcher, SGGR should be has own safety class to make their performance reduce cost. In this case, why not you make a joint cooperation uh, research with Indonesia to make uh, or HTGR community to make own safety class for HTGR. Otherwise, you uh, always a higher cost than PWR. I, I read some paper of China that the cost is higher than PWR. So what what what, what solution for us if uh, the cost is higher than PWR, even uh, the safety is uh, superior, right? I mean, uh, this is an opportunity. Why not to uh, make uh, own safety class? Which one the uh, which one which component following the highest level industrial grade, or or which one to nuclear grade? So if if the thing is following. Uh, PWR and you will be uh, lost the superiority compared to the PWR. It's a, uh, it's my dream in, in when I was young. <laughs> now I'm getting uh, uh, senior than you, <laughs> so we have to. Uh, uh, what I cannot tell more about this. Uh, let uh, uh, give us insight about that. Thank you. All right, uh, sir. I'm sorry. What's your name? First. <laughs> uh, Yusrus Dian Ahmad, but many people call me Ahmad. That's All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, I would like to. Uh, uh, okay, Sun Dr. Sunjun, can you provide us an answer for Mr. So first of all, thank you for the question. I think it's a very important topic. And uh, for my slides, I didn't have much more details to explain that, but right now for China is still a challenge for our HTGR people because we have to negotiate with the uh, regulatory body to discuss how to lower the grade for the components for the SSC. It's important. But let, let me respond to you in two uh, items. First, firstly, because HTGR is uh, quite safe, we have the idea of inherent safety, means that the HTGR have a simplified system, especially for the safety related system compared to PWR. So for HTGR, we have the very simplified system means that the cost can be lower. This is first thing. Second thing is because uh, HTRPM is the very first one for modular HTGR in a paper bias. So right now for the uh, first one, we cannot talk much about talk more talk much about the cost because we only have the prototype right now. But if we can have larger market, we can have more HTGR built in the future, or we have the needs from the market then we can use the idea of uh, model, uh, modularization to lower the cost, means the factory can have a uh, manufacturer lines based on uh, the numbers. So it can also lower the cost. Uh, the third thing is that uh, if we uh, can convince the regulatory body uh, to lower the, uh, the grade of the nuclear related to components or systems, that would be great to uh, lower the cost of HTGR. But what we talk about uh, the cost is only for electricity generation. If we combine uh, coal generation, for example, I mean, for the electricity generation and also the use of uh, a steam, for example, then we can combine these two functions together and uh, calculate the cost uh, again, that may also lower the price of HTGR. So right now, as I mentioned, for the future plans of HTGR in China, uh, we are use HTGR for coal generation. We are supply the electricity and also we are supply the steam to the chemical plants. That will be uh, also great benefit to lower the cost and the increased the need in the market. So that is my understanding about 
the the commercialization of HDGR uh, in the near future. Okay. I hope I, I, I try to answer your question. It's still a, a challenge for us, but we can also discuss that uh, maybe in the framework of a joint laboratory. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we can discuss. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, can I can I have uh, some additional? Okay. Can I have some additional uh, answers or comments to your question? That's really a good, excellent question. When we started with the HTRPM project, as you pointed out, we really did not have, and actually we still don't have, a well set of established codes and standards, design criteria and so on, because we were actually doing the pioneering work, kind of uh, doing the pioneering kind of work. Uh, but as, uh, we have, as we are now, we are standing, we have basically almost finished this STRPM project. We are trying to compile a set of design criteria, a set of standards of a modular HTR, uh, HTGR uh, design. And in this set of standards, safety, classifica safety classification of components and equipment is part of. And we were we we are also co collaborating, let's say, with uh, not the regulatory body, but we are collaborating with organizations who are doing the safety review or licensing review work. So, I think we will be very successful. We will we will be su uh, successful in advancing to have a better established uh, standard system for HTGR design. So that's one uh, additional comment. A second uh, comment is uh, you mentioned the cooperation between our organizations, between uh, INET, Tsinghua University, and ORTN in this respect to demonstrate to your uh, regulatory body. That's an excellent idea, I think. Actually, one of the topics we were co cooperating on is safety and uh, licensing. Uh, of this, this kind of reactor. And uh, in the last few years, we from China, we have learned a lot about your regulatory system. I think we want to continue the cooperation in this area, safety and uh, licensing or safety and the licensability. Yeah, thank you for the, for the question. Uh, let me add uh, something. Uh, but by uh, dealing with safety class much deeper, so Indonesian chance to participate in collaboration, I mean, the uh, domestic participation will, will be more higher, you know, because if, if, if the, the grade is too higher uh, for Indonesia, then we have difficulty to, 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 to to follow, I mean, without compromising with the safety, Indonesian uh, how to increase Indonesian participation in all the component. So, so that's the goal, without compromise without compromising the safety. That's that's our goal. Uh, why not uh, SGGR has own safety class? not following the PWR safety class like that. So Indonesian participation could be uh, more more easier or like that. So I mean, the content of industrial higher levels grade comparing to nuclear grade is in balance or in, uh, in optimized uh, that Indonesian uh, participation could be, uh, it is important to solve the, our community that look at Indonesian is uh, Indonesian people could participate and more significant like that. Thank you. Yes, check. Check. All right. All right. Um, is there anyone want to ask? Okay. We have one here. Thank you. Uh, my name is Farhad Aziz. 
uh, I was involved in the um, initial benchmark calculation for the CRP5 for the HDGR, including the calculation of HDR10 before. Mm -hmm. However, I'm interested to know the um, development. Uh, you mentioned uh, that you did the power experiment, the electrical power experiment, and, and it was running okay up to 15%. Power. Did you try to increase the power above that? And if so, how much is the highest ever electrical power uh, resulted from the HDRPM? Okay, thank you for the question. So what I mentioned in the slides, 50% is just uh, one uh, achievement in the whole commissioning program. And uh, of course, after that, we increase the sum of power of eight uh, reactor into 200 mega, megawatt, uh, megawatt thermal for each one, for one, number one, and number two. And right now we, we try to do more commissioning program for each, for each reactor. So the, the final electricity uh, generation of the HDRPM is 200 megawatt electricity. If we use two, uh, reactor connecting to the stream turbine together. Okay, that's that is final uh, goal. Yes, but of course, of course, during the commissioning phase, we have different levels of electricity. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. yeah. So, do you have any problems uh, that you want to share with us, if any, during the commissioning? Uh, I think most of the difficulty is the reliability. So, because it's a combination of different. Uh, components, valves, uh, control systems. We have to uh, use the commissioning phase to make that everything can be run in a, a better uh, position, better uh, per, uh, status. So this means that we want to achieve that level of running. But of course, when all these component systems combine together, we have to make a balance of each system. So normally after the commissioning uh, phase, the uh, operational uh, parameter is a little different from the design uh, parameters. That is the uh, significance of commissioning. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, anyone else want to ask a question? Okay. Uh... Please introduce my name. My name is Deonto Haitri from uh, Renewable Technology University, uh, Pas Graduate Dharma, Uni uh, Dharma Persada University in Jakarta. Uh, I have question from uh, to Professor Dr. Ing Sung Yuliang and Dr. Sung Jun. And uh, the first question is, how to minimize the effect of nuclear reaction that is uh, quite harmful to humans and the second question, uh, does uh, the artificial sun made in China also we use nuclear energy. Thanks. Please uh, retell us your question, sir. Uh, yes, uh, the first, uh, how to minimize the effect of the nuclear reactor uh, that is quite harmful to humans. And second question is, does the artificial sun made in China also use nuclear energy? Uh, the, yeah, artificial artificial in China use in China. Uh, nuclear energy. Is the nuclear energy also. Okay, the question is: uh, Is the artificial sun that we the what that we found in the news recently is use the nuclear reactor also nuclear energy? <laughs> okay. Okay, so thank you for the question. Let me answer the que for, uh, second question first. It's about artificial intelligence technology used in the nuclear power. Am I right? Uh, so I'm sorry. It is uh, the artificial sun that we found in the news recently. Yeah. Is it used the uh, nuclear uh, energy or not? The artificial sun. Okay. It's a fusion reactor. Fusion. Okay. Yes. Uh, 
fusion. It's a fusion technology. <laughs> okay. So actually, I'm not so familiar with fusion. Uh, fusion technology is uh, the R and D of that is conducted in another institute. Uh, I'm not quite familiar with that, but I mean it's almost in the same process with other countries. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not so familiar with that. I'm a fusion guy. <laughs> All right, okay. so the second question from him is how we are people working in the uh, uh, nuclear reactor avoid the severe uh, effect of the radiation in the HTGR? Uh, if I understand correctly, the question is how to minimize the radio, how uh, to minimize the radiation effect, the radiation of, effect, the safer radiation, radiation effect of the operating people. Yep, the the people working in the in the nuclear reactor, how to avoid the danger of the radiation, the uh, safer effect, the safer effect of the radiation. Well, if I understand correctly, uh, from historical experiences, because we already have had a few gas cooled reactors, the AVR reactor in Germany, the THTR reactor in Germany, these historical experiences have shown that the operating condition, the doses in the plant is relatively lower than the big uh, uh, water reactor plants because of the low, there is, there is low radioactivity in the primary circuit and it also the plant, the gas cool reactor plant also generate much less radioactive wastes. So, generally speaking, with the high temperature gas cool reactors, you are working in a less radioactive uh, facility because there is much less radioactive radioactive waste. Uh, in terms of industrial uh, safety that a, a, a operator uh, faces, you just, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's a kind of normal uh, procedure. You, uh, you, you work according to working procedures and the working procedures are defined, are, are compiled, are, are defined according to standards, those limits and, and so on. I don't think we are making very, very special measures we are taking very, very special measures to protect the operators in the gas cooled reactor plant. They are, well, they are well protected as long as they work according to the working procedures. Uh, I don't know if I am answering your question. Is it quite clear, sir? Okay. Mm. Okay, another one. Good morning. My name is Susiadi. Uh, I visited the uh, HDRPM in 2015. At the time, uh, the building was still under construction and it ran ongoing uh, on time, I think. But uh, uh, what is it? Uh, at the time, the schedule of the commissioning is uh, 2016, but after that, I never heard that it was started uh, for the commissioning. And and but now uh, in 2021, yeah, uh, that the commissioning was started. I wonder why that can happen. Uh, actually, what was the main issues causing that uh, very long delay? It, uh, because it's actually uh, uh, was. Thank you for the question. I, I know question related to the delay of the project, right? Yeah. So yes. So as I mentioned, it's a it's a first of its kind design, and then we have to rely on the industry for the uh, of the ma manufacturer in China. Even we have a very good design, 
of everything uh, following the philosophy of modular HTGR. But uh, manufacturer fabrication is another thing. We have to rely on the technology, we have rely on the industrial base uh, for every uh, for everything. So as I mentioned in the slides, uh, important components, including uh, the main helium circulator, uh, the steam generator, uh, the fuel handling system. So all these things are new to us. We uh, do the R&D together with the industry to work on those challenge to make it happen and running in a reliable way. I think that is the main reason why we have delayed uh, a program for several years. Okay. So because it's the first one, first one, the implementation of those uh, projects always have uh, uh, incidents. We don't expect that, but we, we have to face that. Okay. But if when we finish the first one, when we have further ones like HTRPM 600, so those things can be easier. We can shorter the time and the lower the cost. Okay, thank you. Hello. Thank you so much for this effort opportunities. Um, I have read HTRPM report literature since 2016 and then it's quite interesting design that HDRPM has more than one reactor to support one steam turbine is there any consideration of HDRPM with additional reactor rather than scale up um, rather than scale up one reactor to support the steam turbine. Is it more cheaper uh, capital cost to add more reactor rather than scale up uh, the existing one reactor? Thank you so much. It's okay, it's no problem with one, one reactor with one steam turbine. Uh, it's just, uh, if we, we, we design in this way, we have to use a smaller steam turbine, right? But right now in the market, I mean, if we want to lower the cost, we have to rely on larger scale steam turbine. <laughs> so, so, I mean, in the Chinese market, maybe we don't have such a uh, smaller scale steam turbine again. So we, in HDRPM, we use the tool for the, for the demonstration. But uh, typically, if we want to have the uh, economic competitiveness to other reactors or to other kind of plants, we have to use larger steam turbine like uh, 600, a 600 megawatt electricity or even higher. So that is our idea to lower the co cost. Okay. But technically, yes, we can. I mean, uh, is it cheaper? Uh, the design of, you know, design of uh, HDRPM is uh, more than two reactors, right? We only have two. Yeah, uh, more than uh, two, two reactors. More, 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 than, more, than, more than one reactors. Mm -hmm. It means two reactors to support one steam turbine. I mean, is it cheaper to build, to add another reactor rather than you scale up? You know what I mean? Huh? Is it cheaper uh, high, high, the capital cost? Uh, it, uh, what I want to ask is about HDGR design. Is it cheaper? Uh, you support uh, HDVRPM two reactors just, uh, to support just only one steam turbine. Okay, thank you so much. I, I see, I see. So uh, uh, let me explain that. So um, the philosophy of modular HDR is that we have to design that based on the parameter that can ensure the inherent safety. Means that for each reactor, 
<laughs> the power cannot be so large. If it is larger than 250, for example, uh, we cannot ensure the inherent safety. So that is the difference between larger scale PWR and the modular HTGR. Okay, this is first thing we have those concepts, those philosophy of designing this reactor. So when we uh, maintain the re parameter, design parameter of reactor, how we can use uh, lower cost to generate more electricity. That is the idea of modular modularization. We use more than one reactor uh, in the same power plant uh, connecting with one larger steam turbine. So I don't know whether I explained it uh, clear. Uh, I mean, we use the same design of reactor, but we can use different number of uh, reactor connecting with different uh, power level of steam turbine for the needs for the market. Then we have uh, six, for example, for HTRPM 600, maybe later we have nine or 10 for even larger scale uh, nuclear power plants. And then we can use that, for example, compared to AP1000, for example, or other uh, generation three plus nuclear power plants. So that is the, <laughs> that's this idea of uh, for modular HDR. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Gagat Rahmadi. Just a quick question. What is the main reason China decided to develop a bubble bed fuel type, not a prismatic type for the fuel? We know that both of them based on the triso fuel. And for prismatic, you don't have to build like complicated of your handling let like you mentioned before thank you yeah that's i think that's a very historical question <laughs> to, to choose between pebble and uh, prismatic i think both versions have the advantages and uh, disadvantages strong points and uh, weak points and both have got some experiences the pebble experiences in Germany, the prismatic in the United States. And why China has has gone the pebble way, uh, I think, to be frank, primarily because we started cooperation with Germany. Uh, I think the answer is simple. Uh, uh, yeah, pebble has some complexities. Now we have realized, yes. <laughs> Uh, on the previous question, the schedule, de the schedule delay, yeah, I think uh, also to be very frank, the schedule delay with first of all canned plant is very typical. And in our case, it's primarily because of uh, component equipment manufacturing. Uh, the industry cannot produce or manufacture the equipment or the or the components as schedules as they have promised because they have got no experience in manufacturing in manufacturing that equipment there were a lot of discussions modifications experiments so the equipment is the difficult part for a first of a kind plant mm. Mas Farisi, Mas Bolaisin. My ad in Indonesian person. Sure. Mohon izin saya tambah. Terutama pertanyaan Mas Doni yang menarik. Mengapa dua tidak satu ya Mas Doni? Kalau kita lihat di sorry in Indonesian, saya beres mistaken. I, I'm safe. <laughs> uh, kalau lihat di Afrika Selatan, jadi ada dua banyak cerita tentang HTGR. Dari Afrika Selatan kita belajar cara yang salah, sorry. <laughs> nah, 
Afrika di antara sehingga banyak pelajaran kita saat itu di antara cara yang salah quote unquote menurut pengalaman kita adalah ketika kita memaksakan Gus pakai internal heat exchanger. Jadi STGR plan jangan pakai internal heat exchanger satu poin. Kedua dari sisi daya Afrika Selatan pun bereksperimen. Mereka coba sempat ada PBMR 400. Mungkin teman-teman sempat ngitung PBMR 400. Uh, tetapi PBMR 400 akhirnya disepakati tidak layak. Dan kita punya tamrul PBMR atau HTGR maksimumnya ada 250 MW thermal per modul. Itu yang disampaikan Pak Sunjun. Jadi itu tamrulnya. Kalau kita mendesain di atas 250 MW satu modul, kalau katakanlah even ngaju, kita ngajukan makalah gitu, itu akan lama ya. Akan lama karena reviewernya akan sangat hati-hati untuk menerima. Kalau lebih dari 250 MW thermal, maka biasanya ditanya, akan dilihat apakah reaktornya punya central graphite. Ada grafit di tengah. Pak Ferhat dan teman-teman para STJR mungkin ngerti. Karena ketika di atas 250 tanpa central graphite, tidak masuk di well established STJR. Ya. Jadi eh, pertanyaan Mas Doni itu, jadi ada limit tamrul di, tentu ini tamrul di kalangan orang-orang STJR ya. Maksud saya good untuk punya outside view yang mungkin tamrul itu salah kalau kita mau riset ternyata salah. Jadi pengalaman itu sudah ada dan establishnya di 250. Ada angka lain yang bisa jadi patokan kita. Kalau ada orang propose STGR dengan diameter teras lebih dari 3 meter, ini tidak masuk di STGR yang well established. Jadi kita bilang desain STGR itu well established, lihat level dayanya, should be below 250 MW thermal. Kalau single ya, lihat diameternya, dan lihat apakah ada middle-nya. Itu beberapa tamrul yang menarik, dan itu berbasis kegagalan dan kesuksesan banyak negara ya, salah satunya Cina dan Korea. Sorry to add. Alright. Before we proceed to... Before we proceed our session to another person in that uh, attended this in person, let's move along into the meeting because we have two questions here from Mr. Hedy and Mr. Sihana. The first one, we've got a chance to Mr. Hedy. Mr. Hedy, are you still with us? Yes, sir. I have uh, several okay. questions to... Mr. Sunjun. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sunjun. I'm Hedy from a private company over in Jakarta. Uh, I, I want to ask you a question that uh, have you considered that this uh, nuclear power plant is safe for unit? Because uh, as, as uh, mentioned by several people in the world that uh, we were experiencing a lot of accidents over in Chernobyl in the United States as well but uh, they haven't considered about the danger to the human. Have you considered, have you uh, taken into account all of the uh, dangers to the system, especially HTGR that just uh, recently mentioned by one of, the, one of the participants saying that there are some failures on HTGR. So if, since you are going to collaborate with Indonesia, Indonesian uh, institution or government, so I need your attention to make sure that this HTGR or whatever the name is, is safe for human. And I, uh, and I emphasize to the Indonesian government to consider uh, precisely what uh, the advantages and disadvantages of using nuclear power plant. That's all I have. Okay, go ahead, your answer, sir. Experts, are you got it clearly? Okay, uh, thank you for the question. If I uh, understood well, 
the question related to the safety issues. Okay, so how safe is uh, modular HDGR, right? Uh, so in my presentation, I use uh, several slides to talk about the inherent safety. I uh, talk it uh, from three aspects. So in any accident, the reactor can shut down itself uh, to a safety manner. And uh, after that, it can uh, remove the decay heat automatically uh, to the environment. And also during the whole process, all the re re almost all the radioactive material can be retained in the uh, fuel. So that is uh, three aspects can ensure the safety of modular HTR. And as you can see from HTR 10 safety demonstration plant, we have done a lot of extreme uh, accident similar to the scenario or accident in uh, Chernobyl or Fukushima. For example, the uh, selection blackout, uh, we lose all the uh, power input from the site or uh, we uh, even lose the function of the control rows. So even we have the demonstration those very severe accident to the reactor, it can be shut down itself. It can be uh, uh, maintaining a very safe way. So what I mean is that uh, the safety uh, feature of modular HTGR uh, is good enough to face those scenario and uh, it is proved by the rear design. So uh, I'm not sure whether those uh, similar demonstration experiment uh, being done again by HTRPM, but if we get a chance, I think it's also okay for HTRPM to show the safety uh, feature of these of those designs that is the base for this kind of technology thank you all right okay. um we are going to the next one the next question is from mr sihana the question is, from your slides about HDRPM 600, have a containment design that different with HDRPM. Could you explain about some differences? Uh, th thank you for the question. Uh, uh, the question is about the difference between HDRPM yeah. and HDRPM 600. 600. Okay. So uh, I would say the triple S system including the reactor, the stream generator, the helium uh, circulator are the same design. Uh, the only difference is the auxiliary system and the, the position of uh, those auxiliary system inside the containment. So we have to use uh, 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 more fuel handling system uh, with those uh, uh, fueling and refueling system we have to rely on a larger helium purification system uh, for the innovation and uh, accidents. And also we have to uh, use smaller area for the uh, nuclear island buildings. So I think that is the most uh, difference between these two. So typically the, the safety, safety issue of the HTR HTGR is the same. Uh, our object is to maintain the safety issues and uh, lower the cost and uh, enlarge the generation electricity. Okay. Um, may I add something? Yes, sir. sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sun Sun. If I saw in the uh, uh, in your slide, so the building for the HCRPM 600 is also they have a one in the above that is one uh, a half of um, uh, circular uh, building uh, concrete so there is a difference with the uh, HCR 
200. So is there any uh, difference in the safety philosophy of the containment uh, between STRPM and STRPM 600 in this case? Because in STRPM is only concrete uh, containment in the uh, after, in, for the primary concrete uh, for a reactor and for steam generator. And the building is normal building, but in the SCRPM 600, they have also uh, outside the building is different. So this is uh, quite similar with the other containment in the PWR. So is it my, my uh, uh, is it right in, in, in this case? So thank you. Thank you for the question. I mean, for the con containment or we call it confinement, there is low. Uh, for the function safety function there is no difference the difference in the volume and the shape because we mm -hmm. want six uh reactor and a steam generator into one confinement so the position have to be uh, put in the right way so that we can uh, uh limit it, the area of the nuclear island so that we can achieve lower cost for the construction uh side but for the safety function, there is no difference. Uh, for the form of circular uh, top site on the building, is it all included the air, aircraft crest in the LTAPM 600? Because the form is uh, quite circular, quite similar with PWR a building. Yes, from the shape, from the, from the wheel, of course it's similar because we want to use less area for the nuclear building so if we want to put more uh, reactors into the same uh, nuclear island buildings we have to put it in that way uh, so the area the landing area of the nuclear island is lower means the cost is lower okay okay okay, okay thank you so much Thank you for the question. All right. It seems like we have none in the Zoom, so we are going to proceed this session in person. So anyone? OK. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the comprehension. Uh, your presentation is very comprehensive. My name is Hyrule. I work in the, in the field of nuclear security in Bataan. Now, during the in Breen, I'm working for Dr. Topan as a nuclear security researcher. Uh, as a nuclear security personnel, I would like to know about your uh, consideration, your design, and this uh, plan about what, how to prevent a sabotage target in the generator set backup power if there's any problem. You know, a Fukushima accident, March 2011, it, it was a good lesson from the bad guy, not need to come to enter the reactor, but they have to sabotage the generator set to lose the power. In this case, I would like to know about your design. Are you considered about the uh, security measure to prevent any sabotage target in that plan? Thank you. As you know, safety and security is equal important in the nuclear infrastructure. So that people are noted about that. And I would like to know from your perspective. Thank you. Thank you for the question. A uh, very difficult question, sabotage. Uh, Regarding security and sabotage issue, the regular, regulatory body has a kind of uh, criteria how to handle this problem. So as designer, we have to follow that crit criteria to have a kind of design scenario, what would happen and uh, what should we design against that uh, scenario. That is more regarding uh, intended uh, sabotage, like some people would, would come to us and, uh, and attack uh, the facility. Uh, that is one aspect. That is how we 
what, what we want, what we need to do is to do according to criteria. But I think a second uh, uh, aspect is also important and interesting is regarding these kind of fuel, spherical fuels. And we have to keep these spherical fuels in a very close loop to get these fuels close, closely monitored so that they can be accounted for at every, every time. No, no spherical, no small fuels will go to, to somewhere where we don't know. So this is a second, uh, second uh, important as, aspect. I hope that addresses to some extent your, your question. Yes, thank you, sir. I would like to share with my experience. Uh, after Fukushima accident, March 2011, I was invited by the IAEA in the mission on the advisory mission on the physical protection in Japan. And then I visit uh, Hamaoka nuclear power plant and what they are doing to prevent any accident come from tsunami attack. They make the make the build a taller building, a wall, I mean, it's very tall to prevent tsunami attack of the nuclear power by the uh, uh, earthquake. But the, for the generator said they make a physical protection element in that area. Thank you. They have made what? Security element area. Security Se element. Security. Uh, like a sensor detection and, and so on. Oh, security, kind of security sensors and yes. this kind of thing. Okay, uh, I think my, my, my personal opinion, this kind of reactor is uh, very robust. Okay very robust in terms of safety and uh, security. Actually, from the reactor itself, it's, it's, it's very non-sensitive to outside uh, sabotage uh, attempts. But nevertheless, we have to do things according to, uh, to criteria. Uh, a second point is according is uh, after Fukushima, I think our regulatory body has has made a set of requirements covering uh, like uh, emergency uh, power supply, like uh, spent fuel cooling. So I think several, almost like ten, around ten aspects that where we have to do uh, improvements after uh, Fukushima. And for a gas cooled reactor plant, I think we have to follow some of those improvement requirements. For example, mobile uh, uh, power, power supplies, uh, emergency power supplies and so on. And uh, against the tsunami, there has been a, a comprehensive studies along uh, about the coast of the of the uh, Chinese main, mainland to what extent the tsunami can be and protective walls also need to be bought to be built if that's necessary and this happened to the Qinshan power plant area they have to hire their protective wall against the kind of uh, uh, tsunami or ocean waves uh, so in one word, actions have been taken. Lessons have been learned from uh, Fukushima. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Uh, I guess we are running out of time. So we only have a few minutes to accommodate one more question. Does anyone else want to ask a question? Okay, I think the time is up. So uh, thank you very much for your active participation. Let's give us a big applause. Now I'm handing over the session to our main host, Ms. Dewey. Well, thank you, Mr. Fikri. So before I close, this event, Mas Faris mau menyampaikan informasi terlebih dahulu, Bapak-Bapak, silahkan.
Ya, uh, Bapak Ibu semuanya, di sini ada uh, link sertifikat uh, presensi yang akan Bapak Ibu bisa scan di sini atau buka di s.id slash ortn init uh, Di situ akan langsung ada uh, link presensi dan sertifikatnya. Bantu Bapak Ibu untuk penutup kita. Masih sampai lama kok Bapak Ibu, jadi nanti akan saya teruskan di di sini ya seperti itu itu yang mas ada ya aman ya oke itu aja sih pengumuman dari saya terima kasih oke okay, next for photo group session so we can stand up here so, or atau ya ya tidak apa kita berdiri di sini dari sana Cek, cek. Uh, ayo Bapak Ibu semuanya maju aja Bapak -bapak, usah malu-malu ya silahkan berdiri jadi di fotonya nanti dari panggung oh dari panggung jadi bisa, ya bisa oh terlihat terlihat di semua. Ya. ya 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 Kurang tinggi nggak, Pak? Atau berdiri semua? Saya dari atas biasanya bisa kena semua kan, Pak? Meskipun berdiri. Coba. Kurang tinggi nggak, Pak? Bapak, kurang tinggi? Punya rektor, kantor rektor katanya. Bapak harus lebih tinggi. Bentar dulu. Atau pakai kursi? Atau 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 kursi? Bapak Ibu yang masih di belakang maju aja, nggak usah malu-malu, malu ya, ya udah nggak apa. Ayo maju, 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 maju. Hmm. Pak kampus AB di mana Pak? Kampus AB. Di Bapak lurus belokan kedua, Bapak kiri gedungnya sebelah kiri Pak. Oke, makasih Pak. Iya Pak. Oh, agak merapat ya, begitu ya Pak ya? Oh, agak merapat dan dis, agak disenggak, agak merapat nih. Bisa berdekatan dengan saya kalau Bapak Ibu mau. Di sini, Bu. 
Saya di belakang. Penjaga aja saya. Gaya bebas Bapak Ibu bebas. Gaya bebas nih. Terima kasih Bapak Ibu semua. Mas, saya boleh ikutan parkir. Di mana saya parkir? Ladies and gentlemen Thank you for your active participation in the event. We would like to express our gratitude to Dr. Rahadi Awaludin, Professor Dr. Ying Yuliang, and Dr. Sung Jun, and our moderator, Bapak Fikri, for their contributions. We believe that this event has laid the groundwork for future collaborations and partnership, and we will look forward to future in fruitful discussion and exchange of ideas. Thank you so much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.